An alternative to packet switch networks is circuit, uh, is circuit switch networks. In circuit switching, the entire resource between the two <coughs> end hosts have to be re reserved before any data or voice can be communicated. So it's a more circuit like per performance and so there is a performance guarantee. So here in this diagram here, each link has four circuits and one circuit on, on both the links have to be reserved for the two hosts to communicate to each other. <clears throat> and I'm talking about the two hosts that are diagonally opposite to each other. And you can see in the figure that the circuit is marked in deep green. So though there is a guarantee on performance because resources have to be first allocated in a circuit switch network, there is the drawback that the first, the call, has to be first set up bef uh, or the resources on the entire path have to be reserved before data can be communicated. A circuit switch network is typically used in a telephone network. That is the place where circuit switch switching is widely prevalent. Whereas in the internet, it is packet switching that is widely prevalent. So let's look at how circuit switching is implemented. The two ways are frequency division multiplexing, that's FDM, or and TDM, which is time division multiplexing. In frequency division multiplexing, the entire frequency is divided into multiple bands, and each of those bands is allocated to a different user. So here, the entire frequency is divided into four bands, and each band is allocated to a different user. So as you can see, the top band is allocated to the pure user, while the pink user gets the bottom band. In time division multiplexing, it's time that is divided into, into smaller chunks, and each time unit is allocated to a different user. So here, as you, as you can see, that each time unit is allocated to uh, each different user. So the fourth user gets to transmit. So, so for example, the blue user gets to transmit the first time slot and the fifth and the ninth and so on. The green in the second, sixth, tenth and so on. So, so basically, this is how a circuit switch network works, where the entire resources between and the source and the destination have to be first reserved before any data can be communicated. So let's first look at the main differences between a packet switch and a circuit switch network. The main difference is that the packet switch network allows a lot more users to use the network. Let's look at an example. So let's consider this example where there are n users which are which are connected to a router and the router <coughs> has a one Mbps outgoing link. Now each user, when or active, has wants to send data as at 100 kilobits per second. The thing is, each user is only active 10% of the time. Now in a circuit switch network, regardless of how long the users are active, what happens is they have to have the entire resource allocated to them. So because uh, each user desires 100 kilobits per second, what happens is a uh, there can only be 10 users that can be accommodated because 100 kilobits per second multiplied by 10 is 1 megabits per second. So circuit switch can only support 10 users. On the other hand, if we do a little bit of math, and I will not go into that, what you can, you can see is the chance that 35 users in a packet switch network will be, <clears throat> that with 35 users, the chance that 10 users will be active at the same time. Remember that each user is only active 10% of the time is only 0 0.0004. So it's actually very low. So a lot of users can be supported at the same time in a packet switch network. So that is the main takeaway message, even if you don't want to get into all this math. But so does that mean that packet switch is a clear winner over circuit switch? It is great for when there's bursty data. And for that, that is you want to send some amount of data and then you have nothing else to transmit. And then you want to send again some amount of data and have nothing else to run. And that is what is called known as bursty data. It's, it's very simple because there's no call setup. Remember that in, in a circuit switch network, the entire resources from the source to the destination have to be reserved before any data can be set. This kind of setup is not required in a packet switch network. So it's much simpler. On the other hand, Man, you cannot get any performance guarantees in a packet switch network. Whereas in a circuit switch network, though there is a delay in setting up the call, once the call has been set up, those resources have been allocated to you. They cannot be taken away until unless you basically give up those resources. So it gives much more performance guarantees if you use a circuit switch network. 
we will look at another aspect of a packet switch network. In a packet switch networks, what can happen is there can be excessive congestion and it can that can lead to packet delay and loss. We had a brief discussion uh, on this earlier when we looked at deal queuing delays that were happening in a packet switch networks. So there is no clear winner and there, there are advantages to both. But in the internet, what is mainly used is the packet switch behavior. And that is due to the fact that it can accommodate a large number of users. But then because the internet uses a packet switch behavior, there are no guarantees on performance, unlike a circuit switch networks. So I would like to end today's lecture by asking you to think of some human analogies which are which correspond to a circuit to the circuit switching and the packet switching behavior okay so please think about this and we will continue our discussion in the next class